Oh. The views and opinions expressed by any host or guest of WJMS Radio do not reflect the beliefs of its owners or associates. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to WJMS Radio or the show hosts whose words, advice, and or opinions appear from or on our website or on air. And now, it's time to sound off with jams on WJMSRadio.com. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Are we on the air? You're listening to WJMSRadio.com. Jam. This chick is a sick individual. You're tuned in to Sound Off with your girl Jams right here on WJMSRadio.com. There is no competition. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Sound Off right here on WJMSRadio.com. This is your girl, Jams. I'll be kicking it with you live today from 12 p.m. to 2. I've got an awesome show for you guys. I'm really excited for this one because it's something that I've been interested in for a long time. So definitely looking forward to the conversation today. Phone lines are going to be wide open, folks. If you want to give us a call, the number is 914-619-5267. Again, that's 914-619-5267. Or if you're shy and you want to chime in but you don't want to have your voice on the radio, Radio, you can always tweet us at WJMS underscore radio and we'll read your tweets live on the air or your questions if you happen to have any as well. Couple housekeeping announcements, of course. I want to thank the folks behind the scenes at Sound Off that helped make this show possible. Devin, Eric, Brian, and Charday, thank you guys for all your help. I appreciate it. You know, and just even just being around and listening to me vent every now and then is appreciated as well. Uh, to the interns that helped me make things happen too, thank you guys for all your hard work as well. I want to also make sure I mention our winner of the the Get Connected contest from the launch party in October. It's Career Edge Essentials, so make sure you check out their website. You can go to wjmsradio.com and look right underneath the uh, the main page there. You'll see the link to the Career Edge website. So if you're interested in starting a new career or figuring out what you're doing or even trying to figure out what career works for you, Career Edge Essentials is the company that can help you out. So check them out. Give them a call. Um, you can also, I believe their phone number is right on the, the website as well. So if you just see the number on the WJMS site, you can call it right from there and not have to click. But that's totally up to you. I also want to make sure that I announce uh, WJMS is turning one pretty soon. Like we're going to be one years old. <laughs> I'm so excited. So be on the lookout next month. December 12th is our birthday. So we're going to be celebrating. I'm not sure what we're going to do just yet. I'm planning something big though, but WJMS is turning one and it's it's going to be a big celebration. So make sure you keep your dials locked and keep tuned into our social media to see what's going on, which by the way is WJMS radio, all one word on Facebook and WJMS underscore radio on on Twitter and Instagram. You can also follow our Sound Off page on Facebook. It's just WJMS Sound Off on Facebook. Just search for it and you'll see the picture pop right up. All those sites will get you all the information that you need on the birthday celebration and anything else that's happening with Sound Off and any other shows on the station. All right, so I'm going to get into the show for this afternoon. I have special guest Show Wheat Blytha with me. I'm really excited for this one. We had to reschedule and I'm happy that we did because she is the author of Coupons Made Easy and the founder of CouponsMadeEasy.com. Um, she's always had an eye for a bargain. She's been bragging about how little she spends on everything for years from her clothes to her vacations and cars and makeup and now even to her groceries so she was able to take her savvy savings eye and create a successful business and just by sharing everything that she'd been doing all along um, she's a stay-at-home mom and she has time to look for deals and and you know coupons and bargains while everyone else is working but now she actually spends her days balancing her business and teaching her couponing classes while still being a mother and a wife so I want to take a, a great like just take a moment and say welcome to the show Thank you so much for being with us. I'm just I'm excited to have you because I like saving money. So I'm really excited for this next hour of the show. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. This is such a pleasure and an honor. I'm so excited. <laughs> me too. Me too. So, yeah, I remember we had to reschedule and I was like, dang, I had so many questions for her. And now I got to wait to ask the question. So I'm really glad that we were able to get this rescheduled and, and actually have the show today, because I think couponing is it's interesting. It's one of those things where, you know, you see people on Facebook and on social media all the time talking about how much money they save, like they bought all this stuff. And it's I'm always looking at them with awe, like, how the heck did you do that? Or, you know, what was that process like? So when I saw, you know, and read your book, I was really, really excited to have you on the show and actually talk about, you know, how this process actually works. So 
let me, I guess, start with the the first and most basic question for you. You know, like, when did you, number one, decide to write a book on it? And number two, when did you actually decide to, you know, start couponing? You know, has that always been something that you've done? Or was there a moment where you just realized, I want to start doing this? Well, it actually wasn't something that I wanted to start doing at all. How You know, my husband had um, broke his knee, tore his patella. Mm-hmm. Our money was short. We had no other options. We went to, you know, file for um, everything we could under the government, and they told us, no, the money that he had was enough for a family of five. However, it wasn't. So couponing became our only way of eating. And I know that sounds crazy, but we were only eating what we were able to buy and afford with coupons. So we shopped with what was on sale. Um, I went through every ad. If I didn't have a coupon for it, we could not eat it. And that's how I started couponing. And the reason why I wrote the book, um, my pastor's wife, Dr. Uh, Dee Dee Freeman at Spirit of Faith Christian Center was like, you need to write a book. And so Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was a big deal, but she's like, no, people need that information. And when she gave me that, you know, function to do it, I just started writing and everything I knew came from papers, you know, straight on out, just to share that it is possible to live straight off the coupon because I did it for one full year, coupons only. That's crazy. And that was I mean, the book itself is really it's a it's a quick read, but it's so informative. Like it just has all the the quick facts that you need to know about, like how to, you know, double coupons and where to get them. And, and the, you know, just all the information that one would need to start. It's literally like couponing made easy. Like you said, it's it's literally just it breaks it down step by step so that people can understand. But so I saw something when I was doing research that was, you know, more along the lines of like when you coupon a lot of times the stuff that you you know, get the coupons for is not always, you know, healthy things. So, you know, you said you guys were living off of only things that you could find coupons for and sales for. So how did you get like, I know meat and produce, a lot of times you can't really do a lot of stuff with those products. So how did you guys survive for a whole year without necessarily using coupons for that stuff? Well, there are meat coupons. I think that's a misconception. Like Shady Farms gives coupons. Smithfield gives coupons. Purdue gives coupons. So that's where I got my meat. You're able to get, you know, use coupons on meat items because there are meat manufacturers who will give coupons. Also, too, you can call companies and say or write to them and say, I like your product. Can you send me coupons? And they will send you coupons. If you like them, they'll send you coupons. If you hate them, they will send you coupons. They Mm -hmm. love giving coupons. Also, too, um, steam fresh vegetables, they give coupons for veggies. And when we didn't have um, coupons for vegetables, I went to a store that marked their vegetables down. So I would go early in the morning and they would be marked down a dollar. Two dollars. You have to find, you know, go to the store, say, hey, do you ever mark down produce? And if so, what day? And if they're nice enough, they'll tell you what day. If not, you'll just come in, you know, day after day and you'll start to learn. Okay, they mark down produce on Tuesday. So I'm going to come in on Tuesdays and get, you know, they'll bag it up for you and everything will be a dollar. Mm, wow, so that's good. And like, this is the stuff. I hope everybody who's listening right now. I hope you got a pen and paper and you're taking notes because I'm over here like scribbling down <laughs> stuff as she's talking and whatnot. Because like, listen, we're in a recession. Like times is tight. You yeah. got to save money yeah. anywhere you can. So when I read the book, though, I was just like, I, I've always been, you know, interested in couponing. It's always been something that is has sort of piqued my interest, but I was never really like I never committed to it because I just felt like. I don't know. I, I, there was just so many, like you said, so many misconceptions and things, and I just wasn't sure. And then the bottom line would always come down to, like, I'm like, I don't need eight cans of, you know, or eight <coughs> bottles of detergent, you know? So, like, it was always, that was always, right. for some reason, something that distracted me from doing it. It was like, okay, well, you know, I see people and all my friends on Facebook, like, I got all this stuff from CVS, and my total overall price was, like, $3.40. And I'm like, but you have, like, yes. 16 deodorants. Like, what are you going to do with 16 <laughs> deodorants? You know, like, I always, for some reason, that was always a, a deterrent for me. But from reading your book, you know, obviously, there's places that you can donate the items to, like, you can, you know, get all this stuff and there are companies organizations nonprofits that would welcome you know care packages and people that just have hauls from when they went couponing that they would love to have that product yeah you know so that was something that I thought was was definitely interesting for you you know I know you have a family you've got three girls you've got your husband and yourself so obviously your family is probably turning over a lot more products than you're giving away but what kind of charities do you or what kind of organizations do you kind of give your excess items to to keep from cluttering up your house 
So our excess items, we've given them to Dee's House of Hope. Um, we've also sewn into other lives. Like, you know, I met a girl. I didn't really meet her. Her house burned down. They didn't have anything. So I was able to give her what we had in our house. So, like you said, um, detergent, deodorant. So whenever we see need, like sometimes we'll get mothers who need um, pampers. And if I had pampers, we'll, we'll give them to them because we already have them. I get a lot of people contact me for things that I have. And it's just good to, it's just good to give back, especially when the items barely cost you anything. And um, that's just what I like to do. And I just want to interject real quick. You said detergent, right? You said who will want eight bottles of detergent for $3.47? But I <laughs> yeah. say if you can get it at $3.47, you could use those eight bottles of detergent for seven or eight months and you're straight. So now you don't have to buy detergent. You can move on to your next item. Say maybe you only eat organic meat. Now you can put that money that you were going to spend on detergent, on your organic meat, or your organic vegetables. The money can be spent better in another area. And Yeah, and see, that's the smart thing, too, is, like, besides the fact that, you know, you can, like you just said, you can get your haul of, you know, detergent for seven or eight months. Besides that, you know, you also can save that, take that money that you save and apply it to other things, you know. So, like, it's just this whole entire process and learning about this whole thing has been kind of eye-opening for me. Like, now it's more or less, like, do you have the time, you know, because I want to talk a little bit right. and, and talk about the commitment that it takes to do couponing. Because some people think, oh, you know, you get the Sunday paper, you grab the coupons, you go to the store, it's done. But there's a lot more to the process. So can you sort of yeah. walk us through, I mean, because you're, you know, you do this, this is, this is what you do. Can you walk <laughs> us through, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is what you do. So walk us through yeah. sort of like a, a day of couponing in your life or like a day of collecting or finding coupons for you. Okay. So this is a day of couponing for me. So I get my coupons either on Saturday or Sunday. Some stores sell early coupon, you know, the early edition of this post on Saturday mm -hmm. or on Sunday. So on either day, that day, I'm cutting coupons. So I met, when I first started couponing, I only bought four papers. So I would cut my four coupons out and I would, you know, put them in my um, binders, have them in order based upon which store or what aisle. It's totally up to you so you can go back and find them. Monday mm -hmm. or maybe that Sunday night after I put all the children to bed, I will go through the inserts that will be mailed to my house on Sunday, you know, um, I'm sorry, on Saturday by the post postmaster. I will look through the sales and circle what I have a coupon for. So if I had a coupon for Todd, I would circle, okay, I had Todd. What store is this at? Okay, this is at Giant. So then, you know, I would get an envelope. Put, it out, put my coupons inside of that envelope and write Giant because I know I'm going to Giant with these four coupons. That's, that's okay. just the order that I made. Then I would, um, like I said, continue searching all the papers. And what some people do, they just go to their local store and use coupons. To me, that's the wrong way to coupon. I'm only going to use my coupon if I can save 50% or more, which means I may have to shop at the store that may be 10 miles down the road. I may have to go to Target. I might have to go to CVS. And some people say, that's a lot of driving. But where I live, every most of the stores I work like in a two-minute, two-mile radius. So I can kind of get to them. So I may have to go to more stores than normal, but I'm saving more money when I do that. So I'm not going to just go to, say, Safeway or Albertsons or Bilo just because that's my neighborhood store. No, mm -hmm. it's Bilo's tied on sale this week. And if it's on sale this week, then I'll get that from Bilo. If Target has Dove, then I'll get the Dove from Target. So it's a process. You have to look through the sales papers. I know it's time. But we have, if, if you make time, you it, you know, it will surface. If you want to save money or if you, like me, didn't have any other option, we had to. I had to make the time to get what my family needed, you know, to carry mm -hmm. us on until we got out of this situation. So you just gotcha. have to look so, through the paper, find the sales. If it's 50% or more, that's when you execute that coupon. So, and, and now you've been doing this think, for years. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, well, some people think, well, I don't need a coupon this week. A lot of stores know what coupon you have, and so they'll cut what they need and throw the paper away. I say don't throw your paper away. Stores know, know what's in that, you know, a weekly maybe smart source or mm -hmm. uh, red plum, they may wait to the last minute, the week that it expires to have a sale. And then you could have almost had a freebie, but you threw your coupon away. 
Got you. That makes yeah, that makes a, a ton of sense actually. But we actually have a caller who wants to chime in. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to the show. Where are you calling from, and what's your name? Good morning. I'm calling from Owens Mills, Maryland. My name is Erica Liverpool Brown. Okay. Hi, I'm Erica. Ex- Welcome to the show. I'm excited that you had the coupon queen on. She's showing me a <laughs> thing or two. And <laughs> Definitely. I really, I really appreciate her insight. I tried. I will admit, I tried to do it on my own. But I didn't know as much as she offered the knowledge mm-hmm. that she had. So a lot of times, man, I find myself not shopping unless I have a coupon. And then I'm on a hunt for the double, triple, um, not the double, the, the mega coupon stores that will, you know, quadruple or double your your largest coupon. So that's a little tip that I learned from her, and I really appreciate Miss Shelby. Aww. There you go. <laughs> oh, good morning, Erica. Thank you so much. You sound like you have the book and you're searching for the triples and doubles. I like to hear that. I do have the book. And the book, like, like I said before, I tried to do it on my own, did not know what I was doing. I got the book. I read the book. <laughs> I have what I need. So if anybody's out there listening, you think you can do it on your own, you don't know, you don't know. You need to get that book. Definitely, definitely. And you know what? Well, that's a, a pretty good plug right there. Shall we, why don't you tell them where they can actually get your book? Oh, you can go to Amazon.com. You can get the e And let me tell you how to spell it. It's coupons, you know, C-O-U-P-O-N-S, made, M-A-D-E. And it's, it's E, the letter E, then Z. You can get the book um, for nineteen ninety nine, or you can get the e-book for nine ninety nine. For those of you who like to, you know, make you know, I like to circle things and take notes. You can get the book. Mm-hmm. If the ebook is better for you, you can also highlight it in your phone. Awesome, awesome. And of course, I'll put that information on my Facebook page later on this afternoon. But Eric, I want to thank you for your call. I'm glad you got the book and that you've gotten something from it. I have the same book and I have notes all in the columns and in the indexes and everything, circled stuff. <laughs> so definitely read. worth it. It's, it's yes, it is. Read. Yeah, yeah, it is. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Erica. I hope thank you have you a good so day and you keep listening. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. So it is like you are a hundred percent right about that. That is a very easy book to read. Like it's. I think it's. It's not even that many pages. Like I got the book right here. Let me look. It's like maybe. I don't even know. It's it's maybe like eighty or ninety pages, but it's all full of like information on how to use the coupons and examples of real world or real life coupons that actually work. So it's definitely good, folks. I'll make sure I get that information on the website later this afternoon. But it's definitely easy to read and it's really, really, really quick to get through. So if you're interested in this and you want sort of like a beginner's guide on how to coupon and how to just start the process, that's the book that you want to read right there. But I want to talk a little bit about your family, you know, and how this works. You have three kids, of course, and you know what it's like when you go to the store or supermarket and the kids are with you and they want something. So, and you don't buy anything without a coupon. So how does that work? Does your family support you? Has there ever been any complaints, you know, from the kids? Like, I want this toy. Why won't you buy this for me? And you're like, no, there's no coupon. I'm not getting it. They have learned that if we don't have a coupon, we're not getting it. And it's funny because my older girls are old enough. Like, they like makeup. They like hair gel, you know, perfume. And so mm-hmm. that that's almost an incentive to have them cut. They'll say, well, Mom, I see this right here. I'm like, if you cut it, we'll find it. So they know <laughs> if there is no coupon, we're not getting it. And, it, and so it's, um, it, it just helps me get most of my cutting done. If it's nail polish, lipstick, they cut that coupon, I'm going to go find it, the sale for them. Excellent. excellent. So we have, we have one more caller who wants to chime in. Good afternoon, caller. Your background is a little loud, but if you could turn that down and tell us who you are and where you're calling from, we'd love to have your input. How are you doing? This is John Stewart. Oh, boy. Hi, John. <laughs> <laughs> How's everything? Um, Everything's good. I just good. wanted to call in and just tell Showy thank you so much for enlightening me on couponing um since then you know my laundry room has never been the same you know we can't <laughs> even walk in there we got so many tag on detergents and bleaches <laughs> and, and cleaning supplies so i just wanted to you know tell showy how much we appreciate her how much we appreciate you jamie for giving her this opportunity to be live on air to share her testimony and we just thank god for the continued blessing 
Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. You know what? And I, I got to give you a plug, too. Like, you're the one that actually put us in touch. So I want to thank you for opening my eyes to this and giving me the opportunity to actually interview her and talk about this process. Because I'm about to start getting my laundry room looking like that. Like, I need to have <laughs> yeah. stuff stacked on top of stuff. <laughs> let's, get it, let's, get it, let's get it in. I used to laugh yes. at people, you know, before. Like, I'm not going to the store with no coupon. But now when I see the, the, the payoff, I, I'm, I'm in that line. People behind you be cursing you out and everything. Yeah. Why you got all the papers? Yes, I do. And I'm going to stand right here. So uh, the payoff is excellent. And, you know, just thank you. I can't thank you enough. Awesome, you are awesome. welcome. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> thank you so much, John. All right. Thank yes. you, guys. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, John. Have a Have good day. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. That's so funny. So, you know what? He brings up a good point, too. I got to ask the question. You know, when you're couponing and and stuff like that, um, when you go to the register, of course, you know, you always, I guess you go to the the live teller, the not tellers, but the live cashiers. Does self-checkout work as well if you're trying to do this? Like, can you kind of sneak into Target on the sneak tip and, you know, put all your coupons on the side there? Or do you have to go to, like, a live live cashier to, to do it? No, they work either way. You can whatever your whatever your preference is. I mean, I prefer to go to a live person because it's a it's a machine, it's a robot, and sometimes it needs someone to fix it. And you know, if you're in a rush or if you have your children or if you have your baby, sometimes you may have to wait for the self checkout or someone to come and you know assist you. I prefer a live person, but the coupons will work in both areas. It was totally up to you. Okay, excellent. So, all right, that's awesome. I have a couple more questions for you, but we're going to take a quick break. When we come back on the other side, we're going to talk about actually going to these stores and dealing with the people that give you the looks and the managers that don't want to help you out and how you how you navigate the treacherous waters of actually couponing without getting beat up in the store. So everybody okay. stay tuned. If you guys want to call in, the number again is 914-619-5267, and we'll be right back on WJMSradio.com.
Welcome back to Sound Off on WJMS Radio. This is your girl, Jams. It's almost 1230. I've got special guest Joe Wheat Blyther with me on the phone. And we're having an awesome discussion about couponing and how to save some money because Christmas time is coming up, too. Don't act like y'all yeah. don't want to save some money during Christmas. <laughs> but over the break, uh, we were actually talking about something interesting. You know, you see if you go on coupons.com or if you, you know, you get your coupons in the mail and stuff like that, you see a bunch of stuff that you may not necessarily need or use. I asked you over the break, you know, are there coupons that you clip for stuff that you don't use anyway? And, you know, why would you, why do you do it? And, you know, what's the thought process behind it? Okay, well, the thought processing, well, usually I just do it because I'm already on that page. I might as well cut it since I'm already here. I mm-hmm. might need it. I might not need it. But sometimes you, those items that you may not purchase may actually be free. So you may have a $2 coupon. I gave you an example earlier on some oatmeal that was called Sprouts and Grain, I think. And Mm -hmm. I would not normally buy that oatmeal, not because I don't like it, but because it's above what I would normally spend for oatmeal. But I found it on sale at Giant for the same amount of my coupon. So I was able to purchase about 50 of them, and they were all free. I didn't even have to pay tax. I kept like maybe 10 for my family, and I was able to donate the rest. So you may not buy it or you may not have a need for it, but if it's free, most people like free and they'll take it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause, well, you, you know, you, I gift? always, I mean, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, ahead. you scroll past, you scroll past, and, you know, a lot of times, it's, but I usually use coupons.com. That's, like, my main go-to. Not that I'm a couponer, but if I'm looking for something, I'll be like, let me see if they got something on sale for this. I'll usually go through there. But there's a lot of stuff I see that I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't use that, so I'm not going to get it. I wouldn't use that, so I'm not going to get it. But, you know, it's good to know that there's a reason to, you know, clip them anyway because you never know what kind of sale might pop up. I guess it all comes down to the research and just kind of doing the background and, and being patient. That's the other thing that is is key is waiting for the right time to actually use the coupon. And that's something that I'm still learning. So I think everybody listening right now probably wants to know, and this is a question I definitely had as soon as I started reading, what has been your biggest haul or your biggest savings? Like what is the biggest markdown you've ever gotten like on a bunch of stuff that you've purchased? I mean, most of my items, when you say biggest markdown. Yeah, like I mean like what one do you brag about? (laughs) So my recent trip, okay, so my recent trip has been to JCPenney's. And so JCPenney's has a promotion maybe once a month, maybe every two months. And this is how you know that stores have a promotion. You must go online and you must give your email address and sign up for all their promotions. They'll email you. So I don't have to look when JCPenney's is going to have a promotion. So that promotion reads like this. We're going to open the door Friday and Saturday. And every time we open, we're going to give out $10 coupons. 10 off 10, 20 off 20, 50 off 50. This is what, or I mean 100 off 100. This is how the coupons read. So I take my entire family, and it sounds funny, but we hop from JCPenney to JCPenney to JCPenney on the two days that they give them out for the $10 coupon. And you might be saying, well, what can you do with a $10 coupon? I'm glad you asked. You can (laughs) shop the clearance section and get free items with the $10 coupon. So I was able to get my children clothes, my husband clothes. Um, I was able to get towels for the house. I was able to get to my biggest haul recently has been JCPenney. I think we got about $400 in coupons at JCPenney. Wow. $400 in coupons is crazy. And that's my recent (laughs) haul. And that's on clothes, socks, underclothes. Mm. shoes for the baby, headbands, you know, everything, everything that we need. And I didn't have to spend anything maybe, but tax. Mm. Wow. That's, that's absolutely amazing. I got to, I have got to get on this train. Like I'm, I'm doing it now. (laughs) Friends and family who's listening, let's do this. Like let's start couponing and let's start making this happen. (laughs) But we have uh, another caller who wants to chime in this afternoon. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to the show. And where are you calling from? I'm calling from Maryland. Okay. Okay. Maryland is in the house. What's your this name? This is Erin. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Erin. How are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I just call and give my support. Coupon Made Easy is wonderful. And I like the thing about my sister friend is that she shares with everybody. She doesn't keep anything to herself. So if you're following her on Facebook or any of her social media pages, she posts all the time. So you, it's like you can't forget so even though I don't thank her all the time, I give a huge shout out to her because she's just not selfish. And that says a lot about her um, and mm-hmm. her character and how she is 
all the time. So I just wanted to say hi. I support you. I love you. And I'll see you later on. (laughs) Thank you so much. And I appreciate you telling them about my social media, which I forgot all about. You can reach me on Coupon, Easy Facebook, Instagram. Follow me. I share every deal. I, I mean, every I need someone to share with me. I'll share it with you at no cost. If I find it, I'll share it with you. I mean, we all could do better together than we could apart. I like that. <laughs> I like sure that, Karen. Does. Thank you for your call. I appreciate your call, Karen. All I'm right. glad you got the book and that she's been a, a help to you because she's getting ready to be a help to me, too. So <laughs> <laughs> She definitely will. <laughs> all right. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye. So I got to ask, you know, I'm a big fan of Black Friday. Well, I was. I don't really do it much anymore because I don't really need anything. So Black Friday shopping for you. Do you do Black Friday shopping or is like every day Black Friday shopping for you in general? Every day is like a Black Friday shopping for me in general. And it's wild because I think we have to change our mindset. We're so used to going in stores and spending. You go to a store, you spend. You're used to them taking from you. But if you change your mindset and say, what do they have for me today? A lot of stores give out a lot of things and people bypass them without even knowing. Like you give up. I mean, you don't even notice the free things that they have because you're so focused. Let me go in here, get what I need and get out. But if you change your mindset, what are they giving me today? And you, you'll begin to see that, oh, it's some free stuff in here with coupons, without coupons, just to get you in the store. Like, even I said J.C. Penney's earlier, like Macy's. Macy's all the time has coupons on their website. If you come into their store, spend twenty five dollars, they'll give you ten dollars off every time. People go into Macy's and don't even use that coupon. I don't get that. Yeah, Stores want crazy. to give you discounts. They want you to come. They want you. I mean, you know, they want you to come inside and shop. Mm, so, like yeah. I said, every day is a Black Friday. So I don't. I don't spend money on. I, I really don't spend that much money on items, to be honest. <laughs> and um, like so, sometimes somebody asked me one time, well, what are you going to do for school shopping? Well, usually I do my school shopping with clearance items when I have coupons maybe the year prior. So sometimes you have to think ahead or plan ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of times, you know, people wait until the last minute to go school shopping and stuff like that, thinking that it's going to be a good deal. But sometimes, like you said, if you're just patient and you wait, you know, you can get yep. that same stuff for, you know, fraction a fraction of that cost or even free sometimes. So, yeah, it's definitely worth planning ahead and, and kind of being advanced a little bit. And then, you know, who doesn't want to plan ahead and who doesn't want to avoid the lines at Office Max or Staples for people buying yes. 600 folders for 25 cents <laughs> yeah. each and you got to wait in line because you can't quantity them. The cashier's got to ring them each individually. Yes. I know that personally because I worked at Office Max and quit <laughs> because of that. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> and I'll want, never do that again. I want to tell you a funny story. So all that school supply stuff, usually yeah. like a month or two later, is on clearance for 90% off. 90% off. If you wait, yeah. and I know you say, well, I can't see them at the beginning of the school year. No, get enough the following year so it can last them, you know, at least a month or two until the stuff is 90% off. Mm-hmm, exactly. So let's take another and quick you're paying break. When we come back, okay, go ahead. I'm yeah, when we come back on the other side of the break, we haven't talked about what the experience is like in the store yet. So I do want to break that down and talk about how you deal with unruly customers and people and, and stuff like that. So we're going to take okay. a quick break. When we come back, we'll hit that in a little bit more. Again, folks, the number is 914-619-5267 if you want to give us a call, and we'll be right back.
and welcome back to Sound Off on WJMS Radio. It's your girl, Jams. It is 1238. I have special guest Shoei Blyther with me on the phone, and we are talking about couponing and how to save some money nowadays. So I've been talking about it. I've been mentioning it, but I want to get into it right now. So you've got your coupons. You've done the research. You've cut them. They're all in containers, and they're all packaged up and ready to go, and you're on your way to the store. Now you get to the store, and you start getting the looks from people who are seeing you clearing off the shelves and, and all that stuff, and the managers who are following you around the store, and the cashiers who are trying to turn their light off so you don't come to them. How do you deal with the attitudes of people and other customers in the stores when you're trying to do what you do? Well, see, I think that's a misconception, too. So a lot of times, I mean, so let's talk from management's perspective. Now, where I shop, I normally shop. They know me. They know my family. I've shopped there for years. So I think when a management or someone from management sees a couponer, I think the anger comes in when people coupon wrong. There's a wrong way and there's a right way. And when I say that, when I say wrong way, some people use coupons and they'll return everything. So they'll buy Mm -hmm. 20, let's say, packs of bacon and they'll use their coupon. And they purchase the coupon, you know, purchase the bacon with a discount. But when they take it back, they get a full refund. To me, that's the wrong way. Don't take mm-hmm. advantage of a coupon. This is why management doesn't like a couponer. Now, where I shop, they all, I mean, I've been couponing for years, so they know I never bring anything back. If I don't plan on using it, I don't buy it. I don't say, but let me take this back to get my money. I never do that. And, that's, and so if you coupon the right way, they'll be happy to see you. You're not breaking any laws. You're not doing anything wrong. And usually the person's behind me, I'll tell them, I say, you know, this may be a long process. I have coupons. I'll let the person behind me know. Sometimes they're excited to see, no, we want to see how much you're going to save. And so sometimes <laughs> I get head claps. I'll dance in the aisle. You know, they'll dance with me. Say, wow, she saved $80. And they're excited to see my savings. <laughs> um, I like taking my family with me. Um, they know me. They know my family. They know I'm not trying to get an upper hand. I'm not trying to take advantage. Um, there is a right way and a wrong way. And if you're going to coupon, coupon the right way. So especially if you're shopping in your neighborhood, you want to be seen, you know, as an upright, outstanding individual in your neighborhood. And I believe that's how they see me when I shop at my local store. They know me. They know I have coupons. They know I don't shop without coupons. And I want to keep an honest, open relationship between myself and every store that I go to. Now, of course, there may be times where I may have purchased a pair of pants that may have been too small. You know, I'm not trying. I just want to get another, you know, size. Or if I got the wrong syrup, I might want to get another other kind, but I'm not trying to, you know, take advantage of a system that could be, you know, taken advantage of if you do it wrong. Exactly. So, and I mean, (laughs) how big of a role does confidence play in this arena too? Because I feel like if you go in there and you're confident and you know, you know, like, because a lot of people are nervous to use the coupons, they're nervous to see, you know, what's going to happen. So I feel like if you're going, if you go in there and you're confident at what you're doing and you know, you've got the right product and you know, you're good, you should be fine. But how big of a role does confidence play when you're shopping with coupons? I think it plays a big role, but at, at the same time, I think you gain confidence the more you do it. So step by step, you know, you do it the first time. And you can tell the cash, I'm a little nervous today. This is my first time using coupons. I mean, they're human. If you make a mistake, it's okay. You'll say, you know what? If it doesn't go right, oh, I'm sorry. Today is my first time. They'll have patience with you. Okay, well, go ahead. Get what you need. Or I'll suspend this. Or I'll avoid this. Um, Just be honest. You know, today is my first day. And the more you do it, the more confident you get. The more you do it, trust me, in the end, you'll be like, yes, I did that like a boss. You know, the more you Mm -hmm. do it, you'll gain confidence as you go. Okay. So, all right. That should put the listeners at ease a little bit. So folks that are listening and they're kind of worried about like, what if my coupon's not right? What if like, you know, I didn't get the right thing? Just, you know, like she said, be honest, be upfront and and tell the folks like, this is my first time. And I guess you get better with it as you go. The confidence comes from doing it over and over again. But so my question is like, I'm not a math major. You know, I I don't like doing math. So do you carry a calculator with you when you're in these stores? Like, how do you know? Like, let me buy 15 of these. It'll cost me this much money. And then I should be able to subtract this much amount like 
does the math ever get easier or how does that work? No, I do. You know, what you're that's that I'm the same way. I don't, I don't really care for numbers. I'm not a mathematician. So I'll do all my math at home. I'll get it out. I'll calculate it times 12 times six. How much should tax be? It should be around this, you know, amount right here. I suggest everyone do your math at home. The reason why I say that is you have time, you have space. When you're in line, you kind of feel rushed. People behind mm-hmm. you, cashier, you know, maybe rushing you. You never know what the situation may be. And when you're at home, if the total say, you know, around $4 and you get to the store and it's $10, you know something's not right. Maybe the cashier didn't scan all your coupons. Maybe you got the wrong item. Um, no, it should be around 5 bucks. So you, if you've done your math at home, I suggest that's how you do it. Get your calculator out, do, you know, do the math, and know how much you should spend on an item before you go. And you, you might be saying, well, that's kind of hard because I'm going to add other items into my shopping cart. I don't suggest you do that. This is what mm-hmm. I suggest. If you have coupons, only purchase what you have coupons for at that time. Break it up in two orders if you have to because you should know before you go how much you're going to spend on your coupon items. And the only way you're going to know is if you only get the coupon item. Yeah, and see, for somebody like me, that's awful because I'm going to go into a supermarket, and heaven forbid I go into the supermarket hungry because I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get these Fruity Pebbles. You know what? I'm going to buy that no, six-pack of Skittles. Like, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of dumb stuff. Like, if I'm hungry in a store, you better watch out because I'm going to buy everything I don't see. Like, you know what? I'm going to cook that tonight. And then I get it home, and I'm like, you are not going to make filet mignon. Like, stop it. Take that back. <laughs> you know, like, I am known for hungry shopping. I am a hungry shopper. I'm hungry in general. Like, I'm hungry right now. So, so I know. I could go to a store and not like I have no self control in the supermarket. It's terrible. Like I, yeah. uh, that's that's probably my biggest struggle is don't add stuff. Like I'll go to the store with a list. Like Jamie and I have pep talks with myself in the car. I'm driving there, driving. You know, like Jamie, you go in the store <laughs> and you buy what's on your list. Don't Say buy it. nothing that's else. It. Don't get anything else. And then I end that's up it. in. An aisle I'm not supposed to be in. I'm like, well, I do need to get, you know, a trash can. I do need to get, like, just dumb stuff. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know what my problem is. But it takes <laughs> that's my biggest point. It takes self. You have to have self. The store knows how to get us. They know that we're hungry. They know, they put all the snack food on the way out. Drink, yes. snack. So one thing of soda is one eighty nine on your way out the door. Now, if you get a soda that's on the aisle, that's usually ninety nine cents. But they know you're impulsive. They know you want it cold. They know you want you know you want it right now. And for right now price, you'll pay an extra dollar. They know mm-hmm. they get us as if you cannot go hungry. You have to go focused, and you have to you have to have self discipline. Or you'll be spending the money that you did not want to spend. And you could have got a pair of shoes or a pair, or you could have went on a trip, really. How much yeah. money are we overspending? You could have went, took a, a plane somewhere. That money <laughs> adds up. It does. It really does. So, yeah, that's that's one thing I got to work on, self-improvement. Like, I got to go in with some self-control or have somebody with me that's, like, put it back. Like, what? Why? Yes. Uh, but I want it. Yes. That's, <laughs> like, that's my husband. My husband's like, no, but I'm hungry now. I'm like, no, you're not eating anything. If we don't have to keep on, no. He's worse than the children, if I could be honest. My husband's like, I just want, to, I just want some popcorn. I'm like, nope, we have popcorn at home. We'll be home in 10 minutes, you know. He's my Sorry, husband, husband if you're listening right me. now. <laughs> yeah, he's listening. I know. He knows. It's the truth. He's like, I'm just thirsty. No, and now I start carrying things in the car. You know, nuts, juice, whatever. We got some in the car. Let me just get this for you. You're so funny. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the the stuff that you mentioned in the book. We've been interspersing it in the discussion here, but I want to go into some of these topics that you brought up through the pages here. So there's this one thing you talked about, about coupon cycling, about coupons coming back. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what that means and why it's important? Because I think a lot of us get a coupon like, oh, I got to use it now before it expires. So talk about what cycling is and, and what that means for a couponer. Okay, so most key, so most companies or most manufacturers are the same manufacturers that you're going to get the coupons in over and over again. Coupon cycle is like six to eight weeks. So today you may see um, Jimmy Dean, right? Six months from now, you'll also see Jimmy Dean. And it's something within a couponer that says, I got to get this now. And the reason why is because you spent money on that paper. You don't want that coupon to waste. You know, so it's almost kind of like you're fighting, you know, within yourself. Should I use this now? Should I use this later? I don't want it to expire. 
But sometimes if a sale doesn't surface, they will expire and it's okay to let it go. There wasn't a sale. Um, you couldn't save 50% or more. Let the coupon go. It's going to come back in about six to eight weeks. Some coupons come out month after month after month. Some coupons may take two months. Like, for instance, there's a um, PNG. Month after month, you'll get crushed. You'll get um, tied, gain, uh, downy. You'll get, um, just to name a few things, deodorant. That comes out every month, and it's the same coupon in there most month after month. Now, the value of the coupon may change. It may be 150 you know, one month. The next month, it may be $2. But you know that coupon is going to come back. So maybe you couldn't find tied on sale this month. I know you spent the money on the paper, but it just wasn't under 50%. I say don't use a coupon unless you're saving at least 50%. So if you can't use it this month, that's okay. It's going to come out next month. And that's what I mean by cycling. Some coupons come out every month. Some coupons take two months. And some coupons take six to eight weeks. And you'll begin to learn the cycle when you start purchasing the paper. And so, it, and, and this is why I mean it also becomes easy for you. Like, um, you know you're going to get tied every month, so you know to keep your eye open for tied. You know you're going to get down every month. So, okay, let me keep my eye open at these stores to see if it's going to go on sale. And that's that comes with ease. You know they're going to come month after month. So it's okay if you lose a coupon. <clears throat> So, and then another thing you mentioned also is it says pay attention to store sales that say buy three, save $3, or buy five, save $5, because they're good indicators that the coupons may, that coupons may exist for those items. Like, how do you know that there's going to be a coupon for those kind of items? And, like, how, do, how will those the indicators? See, that comes with experience. So, I always look at buy three, save three, buy ten, save ten, um, buy one, get one. Because they're, the store is already giving you a discount. Now, if the store is giving you a discount and you can find a, a coupon also to cover some of that discount, look for a coupon. Most of the time, you may be able to find one or two coupons to match the store sale. The store knows what coupons have been issued. So they'll mark a set. They want you to come in there. That's how they pull you. They want to get you in there, and they want you to get you off focus and say, oh, I like that thing right now, y'all. Well, let me buy that, too. So if you can focus yourself enough just to get what's on sale and walk out, you win. But if you go in there, purchase what you came to get, and get other things that they have on sale without a coupon, to me, they win. Mm, That's how they so lure you inside. <laughs> It's all a game, <laughs> basically. So, yeah, it, re it really is. And their game is to get you to spend more money than you ne normally would. They they want you to spend money. That's how they survive. Mm. So another question I have for you. We have about 10 minutes left in the show. I still want to give you time to shout out your contact information and where people can get the book, too. And I also want to go over some of the pros and the cons to couponing, because there's also some downs, some drawbacks to couponing, too, that I want to talk about. I wanted to find out, you know, from you, as someone who's given away a lot of stuff, can you actually write off the items that you donate to charities and things like that on your taxes? Or is that like just... Uh... Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything you give to a charity can be written off as tax taxes. Absolutely. Okay. So there you go, folks. Like, there's no reason to not. You save money and you get a tax write-off. Why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> Absolutely. So Let's go into some of the pros and the cons of couponing real quick. And then the last couple of minutes, I'll give you time to sort of close out the hour and give your contact information for folks. Okay. So some of the things I found online, and you can feel free to jump in here and, and interject when, whenever you feel free or whenever you want. Some of the things I saw online is the idea of the time that it takes. Like sometimes clipping coupons can mirror that of a full-time job, you know, and searching for deals and bargains can also take a lot of time. So it, it costs a lot of time on your end to invest in looking for the deals and the sales. So that's one thing that people need to be cognizant of as well. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. It does take time. But at the same time, you make time for what's important. Like if you have to feed your family and there's no other way, coupon is it. I know people who work full-time jobs with coupon, people who work part-time jobs with coupon. Um, and actually, I like couponing. I mean, it's like, a ho you know, I guess a hobby to me now. Um mm -hmm. And it does, I mean, I can't, I can't lie and say it does not take time. It does take time. But yeah. would you rather spend more money or would you rather spend more time? The decision would totally be up to the person. Because some people would just rather spend, I have friends, you know, people that I know would just rather spend the money. Totally up to you. But I, I don't want to do that. That's just, you know, a personal preference. I would rather save money and do other things with the money. Gotcha. 
So that makes sense. And then another thing that they mention is this idea that, you know, you have to purchase the newspapers to get some of these coupons, like the Sunday paper and stuff like that. And some people purchase two to three to four Sunday papers just to get multiple copies of the coupon. And that can add up to close to $40 or more a month. So that's something that also can possibly cut into your savings. But you also have Coupon University and you've got all these apps and all these other websites where you can get all these coupons and all this information without having to necessarily invest in the Sunday paper. Or do you as you know, as an extreme couponer or as a couponer, do you feel like you have to get the Sunday paper for better coupons or are there other websites and other places that mimic those same deals that you can get? I mean, you can print them off. You can print them off coupons.com. They allow you to print them two per device. So that means two from your home, two from your cell phone, two mm-hmm. from work, two from mom's house, two from mm-hmm. dad's house, two from granddad's house. So there are ways to um, kind of go around the cost of couponing. However, you still may have to purchase the paper. And, yes, it does cut into your budget. But if your budget is covered by the items that you could have gotten, you know, 50 to 80 percent off, I think it's well worth it. You'll get your money back plus. You understand what I'm saying? Like you may have yeah. to put up 40, to, you know, 40 this month. But how much did you really save in groceries? I mean, I have receipts that say, oh, she saved she saved almost four thousand dollars this year at this store. She saved six thousand dollars at this store. So when you kind of compare the savings to the amount that you have to go out, yes, you may have to invest, you know, a little to save. But it, trust me, it'll be well worth it. It will be. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> And and then the last thing I saw was just this idea of gas costs. Like in the beginning of the show, you mentioned like, you know, driving around to stores that may be miles away here and there. So the cost of gas can sometimes get up there. Oh, as well as printing. If you're printing these coupons at home, your toner cartridges are going to cost you some money, too. But unless you find a coupon on those, then you save yourself some money. But those are the last two (laughs) things that they mentioned. Well, please print them in black and white. Yes, of course. Don't print them in color. Print them in black and white um, to save down on some of that cost. And, yes, but for instance, like I shop at, I'll give you one store, Giant. They have gas points. If you purchase mm-hmm. so many items, you can get gas points. I fill up both vehicles for 27 I have a van and an SUV. And if I can fill up both of them for $27, you know what I mean? It's it's worth couponing. So, I mean, okay. if, you, if you tie in the gas points, if you tie in, you, which means you coupon for gas, fill up both cars, you know, $30. It takes me, if if I didn't have coupons, it would take me uh, about 50 bucks to fill up my van alone. Mm, okay. But with coupons, I can fill up two cars for $27. And so I do say be be mindful, be smart. You know, if you're going to go to three different stores, try to make it on your route. You know, don't don't drive unnecessarily like, oh, there's a deal today on Tuesday. There's a deal today tomorrow. And you're driving so many places. Be smart. Make a plan. Do everything in one day. Do everything on the way. Get it while you're out sort of thing. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's it's all about like sometimes you have to spend money to make a little bit of money and you have to be wise about how you spend it. That's all. So I think as long as people are cognizant of what they're doing, like you said, then it's, it's worth it at the end of the day. It definitely is. The last thing I found interesting before I give you a second to close out the show was this idea. People watch the Extreme Couponer show on like, TLC or whatever show it is. And a lot of times, like, they, they think that they can kind of mimic what those people are doing on the show. But people have to remember that they've been coached and they've been, you know, yeah. vetted for this TV show. So these stores know that they're coming in and they're they're on TV. So they're not going to, you know, they're not yeah. going to do anything to say, no, you can't use this coupon. They're going to want to make their store look good. So you may try to go in there and mimic what you saw on TV. And they may say, oh, that was just for TV. It's not a real, like, you can't really do that here. Uh-huh. So you have Absolutely. to be very much aware of the stores that you're shopping at. And the one thing I like about your book is the fact that you go through each of the stores from Target to CVS to Walgreens, Dwayne Reed, whatever, you know, Giant. And you talk about what they offer or what they accept, what they will let you do, what they won't let you do, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I like that the book does that. So with these last couple of minutes, why don't you take a, a minute to close out the show and give your contact information and then any final thoughts on couponing that you want to share with the audience before we go into the next hour topic? Well, that was good what you said. Each store, they have their own coupon policy. Figure out the policy. Learn the policy. If you know the policy, you'll feel more confident in couponing at that store. Um, just like she said, that show was made for entertainment. All of TV is kind of just to entertain us. So some of it's true, some of it's false, some of it's to make us laugh, some of it's to get you emotionally involved, you know? Um, so don't go into the store with that same concept. I'm going to do like they did on that show. No, that's not how 
couponing really works. It's just for entertainment. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for listening to me talk about coupons made easy. I love talking about coupons. You can reach me on any social media, Facebook, um, Instagram, coupons made easy.com. And you can go also go on my website, coupons made easy.com. You can reach me at coupons made easy on both uh, social medias. You can purchase my book, Coupons Made E, the letter E, the word Z at Amazon. You can get the ebook or the hardcover book. Um, I'd be glad to help you plug in with me anywhere. Ask me any questions. I'm always available. I love talking coupons. Jamie, I want to thank you so much for having me on here. It's been an absolute blast. Um, no, I want to thank you. I want to say <laughs> thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been mm. great. Thank you. No problem. No problem at all. And I want to thank you because I'm getting ready to use all this information you just showed me to start saving some money on my own. But we're going to take a uh, quick break. I'm going to put all that information on my website, folks. So if you're interested in in purchasing the book and checking out couponsmadeeasy.com, you can find all that information on Facebook later this afternoon. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back on the other side, we're going to start our discussion. We have three separate topics to talk about. We're going to talk about Shoei's husband, who is a black police officer. He's a deputy sheriff and how it has been dealing with that during this time. We're also going to talk about the Philadelphia SEPTA strike and the implications it has, especially with the election coming up. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't use my platform to talk a little bit about the election that's coming up next Tuesday. So we're going to hit that in a little bit more. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Phone number is 914-619-5267 if you want to call us, and we will be right back. (laughs) 